Why do we use time signatures in music? Well, think about your favorite song or any piece of music. How long does it take you to listen all the way through? If it's a Beethoven symphony, it will take you up to and sometimes above a whole hour. And if it's a regular pop song, it'll usually take about three and a half minutes. That's because music exists in time. And time signatures tell us how that time is broken up. The time signature of a piece of music will also impact how we feel the music and how we break the music up into bars, which can also be called measures. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple formula you can use to unpick any time signature you might be presented with in a piece of music. Time signatures are represented as two numbers stacked on top of each other. The top number shows us how many beats. For example, if the top number is four, then we have four beats in a bar. If it's six, we have six beats in a bar. If it's 27, we have 27 beats in a bar. It's super uncommon though, I should probably just edit that out. But you get the idea. Top number tells us how many beats, doesn't matter what number it is, that shows us how many beats. When I say bar, by the way, I mean the number we count to before going back to one and repeating. So for example, if we've got four on the top, we'll count to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So when I say bar, I mean the number we count to before going back to one and repeating. Now onto that pesky bottom number. The bottom number gives us the value or the quality of each of those beats. The bottom number is often the one that is most confusing for my students. And I'm gonna simplify it for you. 99% of the time, the bottom number is either a two, a four, an eight, or a 16. I'll come to the exceptions a little bit later. In fact, you can jump to this time code if you'd like to see those straight away. But let's first look at these four most common examples. If we have a two on the bottom, we are counting each beat as a minimum or as a half note, as you'd say in the States. If we have a four on the bottom, we are counting each beat as a crotchet or as a quarter note. And I'd say that this is the most common bottom number you're likely to see in a piece of music. If we have an eight in the bottom, we're counting the beats as quavers or eighth notes. And we see this a lot in compound times like six, eight, 12, eight, nine, eight, and so on. If we have a 16 on the bottom, we're counting each of the beats as semi-quavers or 16th notes. This is not really so common, though I'm including it here as it pops up from time to time. You definitely need to be comfortable with this for those instances where it does crop up. In this time signature, which is 4-4 four, four time, probably the most common time signature that you'll encounter, the four on the top tells us that we have four beats, and the bottom number tells us that each beat is a crotchet or a quarter note. So 4-4 four, four is four crotchet beats per bar. If we change the bottom number to an eight, we still have four beats in a bar, but each beat has a quaver value. So it will be four quavers per bar, four quavers or four eighth notes per bar. If we swap it out for a 16, we would have four semi-quavers or four 16th notes in a bar. Now we replace that 16 with a two on the bottom, that would mean that we have four half notes or four minims in every bar. So my formula is look at the bottom number first, identify what the value of each beat is gonna be, and then apply it to the top number. When we can't divide the top number of a time signature evenly by two or three, things start to get really interesting. We call these irregular time signatures. What if we take the time signature seven, eight? Let's look at the bottom number first, eight. This tells us that we are counting in quavers or eighth notes, and that is the value of each beat. The top number seven tells us there are seven beats. So seven, eight means that we have seven quaver beats in every bar. What about five, four, the same formula? Four tells us that we're counting in crotchets or quarter notes, and the five tells us that we have five of them, so five crotchets in every bar. Now, in any of these cases where we're saying there are four crotchet beats in a bar or seven quaver beats in a bar or whatever, we don't have to fill each bar with just crotchets or just quavers. It just means that the total number of beats in every bar needs to match the total number of beats in your time signature. Like in 4-4, four, four, you can use any combination of quavers, crotchets, semi-quavers, and so on, as long as you don't go over the total number of four crotchet beats. 
Now to the exceptions. So remember we discussed 4-4 being the most common time signature. Well, sometimes in music you might see a sign that looks like this. This is called common time, and this implies 4-4 time. In fact, it's exactly the same as 4-4 time. Sometimes you can also see the C has a vertical line through it, just like this. And this makes it cut common time, which represents 2-2 two, two time. So cut common is exactly the same as 2-2 two, two time. You might be asking, wait a minute, 4-4 four, four and 2-2, two, two, they're the same number of beats in a bar, just a different way of expressing the fraction. Well, yes, that's correct from a mathematical perspective, though from a musical perspective, they are slightly different and certainly have a different purpose. Cut common, or 2-2 two, two time, tells us that the piece is fast, that the pulse of the music is on the minimum beat. So the pulse, I have a whole video on pulse and rhythm, uh, which I'll link in the cards up there in case you want to check that out. But the pulse is on the minimum beat or on the half beat. Common time tells us that there are four pulses per bar and they're on the crotchet or on the quarter note. So the music is a steadier tempo, not slow, but just steadier than the cut common time. The concepts of common time and cut common time evolved from the early practices of notating music. Nowadays, publishers tend to use either 4-4, 2-2, along with a metronome mark, which tells us how fast we need to play. There is also one more number, which you can technically see on the bottom, which is 32. It shows us that we're counting each beat as a demi semi quavers. So in this bar, we have 632. The 32 in the bottom tells us that we're counting in demi semi quavers. The top number tells us that there are six beats, so six demi semi quaver beats in every bar. As I said, this is super rare, and the most common numbers that you'll see in the bottom are four and eight. So I hope that this video was helpful, and as always, don't hesitate to ask me any questions in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, or if you found it helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel for more music-related content. I have some documentaries and other music tutorials you might find interesting. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.